very, very beginning, there was nothing but frost and fire. To the north, there was frost and ice and snow. To the south, there was fire and flame. And ever since time began, where the frost met the fire, there was this rimy margin of melting snow and licking the salt from the rind, there was a cow, a huge cow, that swinging at us. And one time, as the cow was licking the ice, she loosened some hair, and then she loosened the dome of a head. And she licked and she licked, and there was a nose, and there were cheeks and chin, and shoulders and arms, and waist and knees and feet. And she licked this giant out of the ice. And the giant got up to his feet, and he was enormous. And he cupped his hands and he caught the milk that was dripping from the teats of the cow and he gulped it down and he grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And one of his hands made love with the other hand. <laughs> one of his feet made love with the other foot. And he began to give birth from the fronts of his elbows and the backs of his knees to beings. And these beings inhabited the space between frost and fire. And three of them, three brothers, became frightened of their great giant parent and they attacked him with stone axes and they brought him crashing down to the ground and out of that giant they made the world. And we'll get a lovely view back looking down over the beautiful Nile Valley which um, is classified as a chalk stream. We shall see those, we shall see wild flints on our, on our trip. I'm sure you all know wild flints. You've seen tame flints in the church wild flints all out there lurking on the foot <laughs> and uh, we shall have a wild flint safari and then I'd like to take you off on a, on a wilderness goose chase up to the top of the, uh, of the heater plantation and we'll get a look and I, I'm hoping, although we should be walking quite fast today I expect, although not, I perhaps won't because I've got a bad leg, but um, we, we'll, we'll be able to take in uh, uh, whole stretches of time uh, 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 and appreciate our own place in the landscape. Uh, uh, and um, uh, and in, in our, our own lives as well, perhaps. some of the glacial outwash is there and so the roundedness is caused by um, the flints having been rolled over in glacial torrents or the reason the flints are down there is because people have been bringing barrow loads of in tipping them onto the onto, into the road and making up the road and they could have been doing that from the 19th century and there was an old custom in uh, you know in olden days stone picking or stun picking is what they called it and the stun picking was all about you had farmers you were paid by the parish to go and collect stones and then make up the roads with them. But these flints are entirely different. I was talking about wild flints, these ones definitely are. These are frost shattered. You can see they've got sharp edges, they're not rounded at all. And what we're picking up here is a layer of uh, frost shattered flint and, well, the chalk's mostly been washed out now. This sandy soil here is, is, what, is what the geologists call solid fluxion debris but essentially you've got frost shattering of the chalk uh, and the flint uh, to perhaps a metre or two during the ice age. The dome of the giant skull became the great dome of the sky that stretches high above our heads. The giant's flesh became the earth and the rocks and the stones and the chalk. And the giant's blood became the rivers and the streams. And the giant's brains became the white scudding clouds. And the giant's breath became the wind that lifts the hair from our foreheads. And so it was that this world came into 
begin. starts to turn. If you give it a crack on that, it will generally chamfer back through there and give you a flight. Um, maybe on this this one, although you have to be careful that you don't destroy the nodule, you have to pick the one that's convenient. Uh, now, uh, um, I've now got a surface that I've created. So I, I can now use that if necessary, and I think I will certainly start here and try and get something off of this side now. So it's quite a different plane we're working on. Here. Oh. I do feel the same way about it now, it's a good play. <laughs> Better than anticipated. If I'm going to do that, I think I'm going to take a piece off first in preparation. Uh, going back there, I don't like this ridge. Mm. So that's what I'll do. I like that. That sound quite lively. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, really. Mm. I'm not worried about this bit of cortex at all. Right. I might even leave that little flat. The back. It's, that's quite a comfortable place to hold. Quite often you find that the under that actually has had that facility there, either on a corner or on the corner. I'll make good use of that. It's an overhang here, so I can't push flakes in this direction, it'll have to come off this side and we'll have to just take that concavity out of there. The point now is it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's, it's a matter of preference whether you switch to a soft hammer. Whether you stick with a hard hand. So, it, what you're using, you're calling that this is a hard, hard hammer still. Got still. And what's um, it, what is that? Is, it, is that flip? What is that? This is, I, th I think, it's millstone grit. I picked it up on the gowers. It's because it's a nice shape. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be. I could still carry on with the, with this if I needed to. Where it's abraded, it works just as well. So you don't have to do that. But speed at which you hit it can be doubled by the direct blow is governed by the speed of your arm from the elbow. Mm. This has got a flick of the wrist as well. And so as you come down you get extra speed. You shouldn't upset the um, performance of a hand axe having that thermal crack in it. That's quite normal. It would be no good in a percussive axe. You can chop a tree down because the first thing would happen is would break across there. Discoloration. It's, still, it's not. So it's not um, after it was removed. It's so they haven't yeah. actually taken time to think that that process. was your damage.
one John decided to call it the road across the moors um, and you can see this dark line going across and it actually does if you go to mm. the moors doesn't yeah, it? Yeah I've been stuck on the moors so I know exactly what they've got there. <laughs> <laughs> These two Everest sea urchins. That's frequent um, when you find one sea urchin sometimes they totally on their own, but it's not, not unusual to find a whole nodule just full of them, you know, like it's uh, like a, uh, on a shell bed, I suppose, you know, mm -hmm. sort of perished, and all got swept into the hollow somewhere, and some of them are actually crushed, so you, you know. <laughs> When water gets into flint, um, it's like in a bubble, it, 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 it tends to make it go white or other colours. You know, if, right. it's, if you've got water with iron stained water, then the flint goes orange. Uh, flint with just ordinary water, um, go, the flints all start out black and they end up all sorts of colours. Wood chains not even want to go. Don't think they will. Yeah! Wow. Hooray! <laughs> 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 well done! <laughs> Sometimes set fire to me whiskers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And every hill and hollow and every scar and ridge in the landscape holds the memory of all that it's dreamed in the past. We are the dreaming, living beneath the great dome of the skull of this giant. We're his, we're his dreams. And everything that he's dreamed in the past is held in the shape and the form of the landscape that we inhabit.
Are you holding that camera, darling? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you found this. You just bashed it open and there it was. Just bashed it open and there it was. We call him Dickhead. <laughs> Probably can't use that on the phone. Call it. <laughs> <laughs>